cheese. Ah, and welcome back to That's Some Cheese, part of the Vendetta Sports Podcast Network. Today is Wednesday, March 27th. We are one day away from the Sweet 16. And on the line, we have Jacob McCormick. Jacob, how are we doing today? We're going to discuss the tournament. What's going on? You were just in Vegas. Tell us about it. Well, I'm like three days removed for four days removed from Vegas. It was, uh, it was a great time. Still recovering a little bit. Uh, a lot of fun. I, you know, it, it's been, it was, it was a good weekend. It was a lot of hanging out with some friends, watching some good games. Uh, real quick, a lot of people are hating on the tournament this year, and I understand that from an outside perspective of just like watching a few games on TV and then being boring. But if you've never gone to Vegas to watch games, like it doesn't matter who's playing every game is like super intense. So try it out one time uh, before you, before you get too old. <laughs> I've never been to Vegas. I was super jealous. All I wanted to do was gamble on those games. And I like gambled <laughs> on like two or three. Yeah. It's probably smarter that way. I mean, I lost a little <laughs> bit of money, but you know, you go down there. I don't go down there thinking I'm going to get rich. I'm not that level. I'm not Action Network staff better or whatever level. So, <laughs> so we're just having fun. So let's recap a couple of the games quick here from the first two rounds. Duke almost looked like they were going to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, any takeaway there? Because I, when I watched it, I sort of have this weird feeling where I never actually thought Duke was going to lose. I I just think they're going to win for some reason. I don't know why. I I think it's already determined. Were you nervous they were going to lose? What was your takeaway? Well, it's weird. I I know that feeling you get. It's like when you're watching maybe the Warriors play in the playoffs the last few years. It's like, oh, I mean, Houston's kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's like you just feel like the talent's going to rule out. I mean, I remember even in the first game against North Dakota State, who had played two days before that in the playing game, 16 seed. That was a like a that was a close game at halftime. It was like a three or four point game at halftime, and they ended up winning by twenty plus points. But Duke did. But like that, they North Dakota State hung around too long for a team with like three top ten picks in the NBA next year. And you know against UCF, it's like yeah they have Taco Fall, which is like a wild card. But he's not like the guy's not even going to be a first round pick in the NBA. I, don't, I doubt that he even has much of a career in the NBA just because of the mobility and how a smart coach and players could pick that guy out and and, and you know take advantage of him. It, you just it was really surprising to me. I, I did think they were going to lose to UCF there, to, like basically most of the like the last probably ten minutes of the game. I really thought they were. That's actually the next place I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. People have been talking about Taco Fall. Yeah. And when I thought about it, I was like, why can't he be Andrew Bogut and play 10 minutes a game and just protect the rim and pick up as many fouls as he wants? Why can't he just be Andrew Bogut for 10 minutes? Is that such an outrageous take? It's it's not. Um, I do think that the right coach and the right system could figure out a way to use him. Uh, you know, I don't, he's, I don't think he's ever going to be like starter caliber. And if he is starter yeah. caliber, it's going to be one of those guys that plays like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes a game. I just, he's not as mobile. I don't think he's going to be as mobile as even as somebody like Bogut. Bogut was very like very nimble guy coming in the league. Like he was, he was a little bit of a shooter, uh, over there for a little bit. And, you know, he, I mean, even like, he's just, he's a thick guy, but even like somebody like Steven Adams, who is like one of the biggest dudes in the league, he can still run up and down the court pretty well. I don't I think that's going to be the problem with Taco is that like the the reflexes and the uh, just you know the court, like the the fast pace of an NBA game like there's some there's some points where he can play and I think he will like you know be able to survive for little spurts but I think it's going to be you're just going to have to get him as like the 13th or 14th man on your bench basically and just utilize him that way the biggest thing that stood out to me the first two rounds, there are virtually zero upsets. Mm-hmm. And for that reason, my bracket's not doing too well, although the Final Four is still intact. Right. Wofford, they play that game 10 times. Like, come on, make one shot, please. I know. They would probably win. Uh, I had Belmont. They lost by the skin of their teeth to Maryland. I had Yale. They couldn't make a shot. They could probably beat LSU. They play that game again. I had... Uh, UC Irvine, they actually won. Then they tied it against Oregon, and then they fell apart. Right. Just no upsets at all. 
I know you really didn't have the big, well, we had a couple of them, but you're right. They were kind of the upsets that we kind of saw coming. Like the, only an upset because of the seating, not necessarily like a, whoa, what happened upset. And, you know, not like, you know, Colgate challenged Tennessee for a little bit. That would have been a legit upset. Um, but y- you're right. It didn't really, nothing really happened. I, I had Belmont advancing pretty far. You know, I thought they were going to really ride that, uh, the hot play from the f- play in game. And they should have beaten Maryland, in my opinion. But, you know, and then, but Maryland showed up against LSU in the next round, too. So that's a legitimate win. And, you know, I had uh, Wofford in Kentucky. You know, that was a game that I watched almost from start to finish on Friday or uh, on uh, Saturday. And you're right. If they play that game over, if you play that game 10 times, I think Wofford wins probably seven or eight times. Because without P.J. Washington, Kentucky is very vulnerable. And I think if we talk about it in a minute, I think that makes them, if he's not playing this weekend, then I'm not very high on them at all. They don't have a guy that can go make a shot, really. He can get his own shot. They have some NBA guys, but they're really like raw, unproven, uh, you know, kind of late lottery, mid first round pick type players. And Wofford really had a better offense and a better team. Just they're they're all American, went over 12 from three. That's literally why they lost. I can't remember a year where the one, two, and three seeds all advanced to the Sweet 16. Has that ever happened? Like all of them. I don't all know about all of them. I know that we had a couple years ago, we had all the one seeds in the final four, but as far as ones and twos, there's usually a two, I feel like, that gets upset in the first or second round. Because, um, uh, I mean, you know, that two seven, you know, it's not like a, it's not a shoe in game. There's a lot of times those seven seeds are really good. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's got to be. I mean, we heard that it was going to be a chalk kind of, I mean, the podcast I listened to said that it looked like a chalky bracket. Um, you had a couple of like 12 and 13 seed wins there, but. You know, once that second round is finished, you're like, oh, wait, this is very chalk. This is like ones and twos and threes here. Which actually sets us up nicely Mm -hmm. for the Sweet 16 because people can complain all they want about not having enough upsets, and Mm -hmm. that's the reason why my bracket's not doing so well, but it sets up for a nice Sweet 16. So we have a lot of good matchups here going into Thursday and Friday. Right. First one on the list, we have Florida State Gonzaga. I have Florida State in the Final Four. I wanted to get your take on this because I feel so confident in what I've seen from Florida State. They beat the hell out of Murray State. They had they just have eight or nine guys, Terrence Mann and Cabin Gelly, and I think they should be able to get Phil Colfer back. And they're loaded. I don't I don't yeah. see them going down easily to Gonzaga either way. No, I think that's a good call. You were you were high on them last week. I really like them as well coming out of the ACC tournament. I will just take the other side of this kind of to point out a couple things uh, that I think you need to keep a you know be aware of going into that game if you're betting on it or whatever. I watched almost the entire Florida State Vermont game. Vermont very easily could have won that game. Like they were in that, they missed a lot of their threes. Florida State kind of got in a lull there. They they were bet they were the better team. And then they played a Murray State team that's really a one-trick pony. They were a great team. Like, no no disrespect to them. John Morant's a top three pick. But they really kind of ran out of gas. Morant had all the points. They didn't really have much help there. So while Florida State definitely won that game, it wasn't a fluke. You know, the the way they won that game is a little bit misleading to me. And to every – you know, it seems that way to me. I would – in my opinion, I think Gonzaga is going to advance because just their ta- their top end talent and the kind of the I don't think they're going. To, I think it's going to be by far the toughest team Florida State's played in in the last week and a half. And uh, you know that's you will see how Florida State takes that. If do they do they stay on a run or does the discipline and pro in the top end talent for Gonzaga prove to be enough of a steadying force against them? You know because you know it, it could easily hit Florida State in the mouth. Let's go to the next one I wanted to talk about. Tennessee has won two nail biters. Yeah. They have made me a nervous wreck watching these games because I have them in the Final Four. Now they get a real Purdue team. Carson Edwards is great. Uh, They always have size inside. Is Tennessee going down this time? Because they can't not show up in this one. This is the crazy thing. I didn't project like now that you when you look at this bottom half of the South bracket where Tennessee and Purdue are meeting up, it's a very weak bracket. And you know, I didn't think Purdue would make it past like the second round because I had St. Mary's actually playing Tennessee here. 
you know, screw me. That was a bad pick. But, uh, you know, Purdue, like Carson Edwards is a legit pro and he's gone off both games and he had a very, you know, 30, what, 35 plus points against Villanova and they really stroked Villanova. And uh, so I, I think I want to pick Purdue here. I think Tennessee is got more talent, uh, more pro talent, but I just think that they've played around too much in the last, even in the SEC recently. And, you know, they had a good tournament, but they still didn't finish the job against Auburn. Uh, I think they've just played around too much in the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to do that against a team that the caliber of Purdue. So, uh, unless they come out and they have a completely different demeanor, I think Purdue is, you know, is going to advance as long as Edwards is Carson Edwards is, uh, you know, playing playing up to form. I have Florida State and Tennessee in my original bracket, so I'll stick with those picks. That'd the be a fun. That'd be a fun title. That'd be an interesting, like out of nowhere, not out of nowhere technically, but well, my, <laughs> nobody my probably has that not, matchup. Not the title. Not oh the title. well, yeah. Well, still Final Four. That'd be fun yeah. to see those teams there. The other Thursday games, Texas Tech, Michigan, Oregon, Virginia. Mm-hmm. I have Texas Tech in my bracket winning, and I have Virginia beating UC Irvine, who's not there. But <laughs> what do you have in the, uh, those two games? Uh, I, think, I think UVA. I think Oregon's run will end. I think it'll be a close game, though, because they've been playing really good defense. They have some good talent. You know, They were picked to be a pretty good team before Ball Ball got hurt and decided to shut it down. So they're not you know, as bad as their record may seem. But UVA, I think they are able to kind of really get their, you know, collected. You know, they had a couple of, uh, they had a little bit of a scare in the first round, then took care of Oklahoma. But I think they'll advance. And then Texas Tech and Michigan, I really like Texas Tech. I like Jarrett Culver. Uh, Michigan has kind of, I've soured on them a little bit. But, you know, they looked good in the first two rounds. They really took care of a hot Florida team that a lot of people picked. You know, that that was a fun upset to pick in the second round because a lot of people, you know, there were some good odds on Florida. They thought that they could take care of Michigan, but it wasn't even close. So I'm probably going to take Michigan to advance just because the experience and uh, and everything. But uh, Texas Tech really showed out against a good Buffalo team. You know, they didn't look good against Northern Kentucky, but they really destroyed Buffalo. So I wouldn't be surprised either way. It's really that game is honestly like the most toss up game that is in the second round, in the Sweet 16 for me. All right, let's move to Friday. First game on Friday, LSU, Michigan State. I guess the biggest question here is people are making a really big deal out of Tom Izzo yelling at the freshman, uh, Henry. Is it a rallying point or is it a distraction? Does LSU show up? Do they not show up? That LSU is the weirdest team in this field because I feel like they could have easily lost to Yale, they could have easily lost to Maryland, but somehow they're here, and somehow yeah. I think they could beat Michigan State. <laughs> Where does this land for you? Yeah. So first off, I think the Izzo little, you know, off or I guess timeout shenanigans or whatever. You know, Scott Van Pelt had a really good comment on that and his one big thing, or I think that's what it was the other day. Um, I don't think it's honestly. I don't think it's going to be much of a distraction or a rallying point. I think they're going to kind of just, you know, they're a very, they're a veteran team. They've been there before. Izzo's been there a million times. I don't think it's really going to matter that much. I think it'll kind of pale. I think the talking point will kind of like disperse because I think it's going to be a really good game. And LSU, this is what they've done all season. I was higher on them just because I thought there was value from like a betting perspective on them being a low favorite uh, in the first round, even though they had a really, really good record. Um, You know, I think they're more of rallying around uh, the off the court problems that have gone on with this team, with their coach and everything else. And I think you know they they've they've won numerous games in the last few minutes in overtime this season, and they've done it both rounds of the tournament here. I know it it leads you to believe that they're susceptible to a loss, but I think they're just very proven in late game situations, even with a lot of young young talent. They've got a lot of pro talent. Nas Reed has looked good. Tremont Waters is like who you want to have the ball. He may be the you know guy you want to have the ball in your in their hands at the end of the game of, of any of these teams. And I think it's I, I'm picking LSU to go. I could see it either way, uh, but I think it's gonna be a really good game. And I think uh, you know LSU you know is really showing teams that they did deserve to be here, even though they did you know it was back is very close games. The next one on Friday we have Auburn North Carolina. This is the one game. Seems like everyone's going to bet the over, but I also think that's bad news for Auburn. Mm -hmm. Both play up and down. The better up and down team's probably going to win. That's North Carolina. 
I don't yeah. see any reason why we should expect Auburn to even – I don't know. I think this is the one game that North Carolina really blows them out. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, the thing is with Auburn is – and this is what happened to them in the middle part of the season, you know, SEC play, is that – if 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 they don't hit their if their three pointers aren't falling, then they're they struggle to score. And they've been they fall they fail the first two weeks. They almost let New Mexico State back in the game. That was a crazy finish. Uh, but then they took they easily took care of Kansas. Uh, and I think UNC. I, I'm picking US, UNC to advance. I want it to be a fun game. I'd love for it to hit the over. I think you just want more fun games at this point. Uh, but. I would. I think U.S. UNC just has way too much, uh, way too much talent, top to bottom, to to really get overcome by a team that just is, you know, a high volume three point shooting team. Next one on Friday, we have Virginia Tech Duke. Virginia Tech actually beat Duke this year, mm-hmm. but without Zion Williamson, right. I actually think that's a bad thing. I don't yeah. think you're beating them twice, and that, <laughs> yeah. with Zion. So I, that's my thing. Right. Like, this especially with Duke playing such a close game last time. Or against mm-hmm. UCF, I don't, yeah. I don't see this one being close either. No, yeah, I see it, and this kind of goes back to the whole like you know Michigan State Minnesota second round game. You know, Minnesota played very well in the first uh, first game against Louisville, and a lot of people were like, "Can they do it again?" The familiarity there led me to believe that Michigan State was going to win that game running away, which was a twenty point win by them. It was right. I think this one's going to be a little more similar. I like Virginia Tech, but. I think after coming off that game against UCF, I think Duke is going to be really focused. They're going to they they realize they are vulnerable now. If there was any tight any part of that morale, you know, any part of that team that thought they were going to coast into the Elite Eight of the Final Four, now they know that's not true. They've seen this team a couple times this season. You know, they have lost to them, so there's going to be that. Uh, I think Zion is going to want to prove it since he was out that game. I think there's a potential Virginia Tech cover there, It'd be a closer game, but I think. Duke's going to take care of business, and it'll be like free throw game at the end. You know, they'll, they'll have to be fouling them. Last game, we have Houston, Kentucky. This is the only one I really don't know because I guess you mentioned it earlier, but P.J. Washington's still not there. And we don't, we don't know. I guess he should play, but I guess we don't know if he's going to play. And that's, yeah. that's the X factor to me. So who, mm-hmm. who the hell knows with this one? I, I think if P.J.'s there, then I would take – if P.J.'s there and is – it's hard to say. Like, if he was if he was hurt enough to miss those first two games, then is he going to be a? He's definitely probably not going to be a hundred percent this weekend if he plays. So even with him out there, are they going to? I think with him out there, there'd be enough shot making and enough leadership to. Uh, you know, he was on this team last year in, in the in the in the uh, tournament. I think there with PJ, there'd be enough to get by Houston. But if he doesn't play or he looks really bad when he comes out there. I think Houston's going to take it. They've got some, some, you know, they're a very well coached team. Kelvin Sampson is wanting to finish this thing out to get a better job uh, on the horizon. And then, you know, they've got some really good shot makers. Corey Davis Jr. or senior, uh, he's a you know probably a pro shooter there. He's just a knockdown guy. So I think uh, Houston uh, is going to advance. All right. So last thing before we wrap this up, your final four pick. I'm going to stick with mine on my original bracket: Duke, Florida State. Tennessee, North Carolina, who do you have? So, man, this this is really boring, but the way it looks right now, and I, I feel like this is the 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 bet the most responsible way to bet. I think it might be all four number one seeds. Oh, I, God, really I don't do. want to see that. I know I don't either. I mean, I would like to see those matchups. Uh, I think a Duke UNC fi- final would be really fun again. I don't I don't want to see um yeah. Virginia in. No, I can see that. And, and I think, you know, if Tennessee moves on past uh, Purdue, I think Tennessee-Virginia would be really fun. Um, but I think the the one I would be a little bit iffy on is the Virginia bracket and then possibly uh, Gonzaga getting beat by a Michigan team because um, I think that's – if Gonzaga moves on and they play Michigan, I think that's the team that could beat them in the Elite Eight. But I'm going to be super chalky and go ones all the way around with Duke-Gonzaga uh, – UNC and UVA, you know, based on what I saw last weekend, I just think those teams are a tier above everybody else. And the two seeds, if they don't trip up before they face them, I still think, you know, especially with teams like Kentucky and Tennessee, we've seen that those teams aren't playing well right now. And they're, you know, Kentucky has injuries. So I don't think if they're full strength and playing at their best, they could easily move on past those teams. I don't think they are. 
All right, and the bracket picks up tomorrow on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for Jacob joining the show. That's some cheese. Mm -hmm. For more updates on the site, visit vendettasportsmedia.com. You can go to Anchor, That's Some Cheese, to find the podcast. Check out our YouTube channel, Vendetta Media. Go follow Jacob on Twitter at Jacob McCormick underscore me on Twitter, Trey Dalbert. And that'll about do it for us. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Trey. Tell you something. You know what really grinds my gears? You, America. Fuck you, Diane.